In this video, I will explain why I made this robot and how it will help me choose a bus. I'll also show you how to make it. Additionally, I'll discuss why building a motorhome from a bus turned out to be a bad idea and what alternatives exist. I'll also share some inventions I'm currently working on and useful finds from AliExpress. Not too long ago, I had the idea to build a motorhome from an old bus. I found this bus for $3,000. The bus runs, but there are issues with the suspension. It's pneumatic and hardly holds any pressure. The engine also needs servicing as it leaks and overheats. It's crucial to inspect the condition of the bus's undercarriage, because if it's rusted, repairing it will be expensive and time-consuming. So far, I've only managed to inspect the engine, and even then, only from the side, which isn't very informative. That's why I developed a crawler that can get under any low-sitting bus to check its condition. This kind of equipment would have been very useful when I needed to inspect the space under a house. Now this crawler will come in handy. I 3D printed all the parts and used wide tracks for better mobility. They are simply connected with plastic filament from the printer, which is easier than printing specialized connecting parts. The front wheels are mounted on bearings, and for aesthetics, I painted the spokes with a marker. The rear is powered on both sides, with all components operating at 5 volts using a $1.50 power bank module. It has a built-in USB for charging, and the output is plus and minus, making it ideal for DIY projects or custom power banks. They come in 5, 9, and 12 volts. You just need to solder the power wires to the output. Soldering used to give me a lot of trouble until I bought this low temperature paste that melts at 180 degrees, making soldering a pleasure. It's a mixture of micro solder balls. The wiring diagram and the program for the microcontroller will be available on GitHub. I place everything in its designated spots and assemble it for testing. I used two LEDs, one regular white and one ultraviolet, to detect leaks. I bought an old tablet at a flea market for $10 to control it more conveniently. It has predictable behavior and excellent maneuverability on slippery surfaces. However, it performed poorly on carpet. The motors are too weak, and it can only move forward or backward. This is the first version, which needs improvements in future videos. But this isn't the only problem. It turns out my neighbor repairs trucks and buses. When I told him about the idea of buying a cheap bus with minor issues, he was skeptical. Kirill gave me a tour of his workshop and explained the costs involved. Regular maintenance for such an engine costs $1,000, $2,000, and this is for a four-cylinder truck engine. For a bus, it would be more because the engine is twice the size, and removing it alone takes three days. Last year, they had a Neoplan bus where the engine overhaul cost $25,000. To compare, I found two listings for similar buses. One costs $6,000, 2008 model with 500,000 taller scales and minor suspension issues, and the other is $27,000, 2006 model with $700,000 kills in good condition. Thus, a new plan emerged. Buy a semi-trailer and build a home on its base. It's much simpler and cheaper, provided it stays within legal dimensions. Importantly, a trailer doesn't need to be legalized. It just needs to be within allowable size limits. According to regulations, anything on the trailer is considered cargo. The downside is, you need to hire a truck to move it to your desired location. However, the advantages are significant. You don't need a commercial driver's license or to maintain a complex engine, suspension, and transmission. 
I don't want to travel with it, as I have an allergy to travel. The idea is to place it in a beautiful location and use it as a summer house. In Poland, land for building a house costs $20,000, while agricultural land costs $2,000 for twice the area. You can't build on agricultural land, but you can park a trailer there, which is not a violation. Therefore, this is a good option for cheap living with the possibility to relocate if desired. I would love to hear your opinion on this plan. A few more useful tips from Kirill. For work, he uses these gloves. They look like ordinary cotton gloves. They are cool in hot weather, but the main feature is they are cut resistant. Seriously, it's hard to believe, but I'll test them now. An ordinary kitchen knife doesn't cut through at all. This is my least favorite knife, which usually causes the most cuts. And as you can see, the gloves hold up. I was confident that metal cutters would cut them, but they didn't. Another handy item is a mosquito bracelet. It really works. Usually mosquitoes love me, but they lost interest when I wore it. I also wanted to talk about my current projects for the home and what the next video will be about. I made a radar that detects up to three people in a room by their heartbeat with centimeter accuracy and highlights their path. I think this type of lighting will be convenient. I'm also working on a lock that opens via facial recognition. Before starting the major work of creating the motorhome, it's necessary to develop a home plan where all the wires and sensor locations are accounted for. Otherwise, you'll have to rig things up later, which complicates life and ruins the aesthetic. Thanks for watching, be happy.